Hi there, it's Liam from LNJ Adventures here and I'm back with another Florida tips video for you. Now, for those of you who follow the channel, you'll know that recently I put up a video uh, on mine and Jenny's top five table service restaurants in Walt Disney World. Um, and today I come back to you with a, a similar video, um, but slightly different in that we're going to be looking at the top five quick service restaurants in Walt Disney World. Now, quick service restaurant basically refers to any kind of fast food restaurant, the kind of places you'll find your classic Disney burgers and chicken tenders and chips, etc. Um, but they don't all have to be just that. There's certainly a bit of variety out there. You can find quick service restaurants in the parks predominantly, but also at some resorts and in uh, Disney Springs as well. So we've got a bit of variety in the list today. Um, quick service restaurants are really ideal if you're looking for kind of uh, kind of a more of a budget Florida holiday, I suppose. Um, if you want to do Florida on the budget, you're going to be doing predominantly quick service meals uh, rather than table service, which is, like I said in the last video, where you're kind of sat down and a waiter or waitress comes over to you or you're doing character dining or a buffet, uh, for example. And I, can stress, I can't stress this enough. You can get by on a Florida holiday with simply just quick service meals without getting bored of the food you're um, sampling. You've just got to um, have that little bit of knowledge of where to go in each park. So I'm going to bring you my top five uh, restaurants, quick service restaurants in Walt Disney World. And the way we're going to be ranking them slightly different to the table service restaurants. Firstly, I think in terms of value, they're all pretty much on par because with the exception of a few dollars here and there, they're pretty much going to be around the same sort of price range. I can give you some prices in this video as well, uh, but I don't really think that's fair criteria to be ranking these restaurants because, like I say, there's far more kind of disparity between prices when you're looking at table service restaurants. Not so much the case when you're looking at quick service restaurants. So the criteria we're going to be looking at is out of five, we're going to be rating each restaurant in terms of food, both in terms of its quality and the range that it's got available, uh, and then an out of five in terms of location and atmosphere. So each of these restaurants will have a score out of 10. Let's get started. So first up is Yak and Yeti Local Foods Cafe, which can be found in the Asia section in Animal Kingdom uh, theme park in Walt Disney World. Now, this is not to be confused with Yak and Yeti, the table service restaurant, which is, uh, I, I believe, located next door. I'm really bad with the geography of that part of the park, but they're, they're within the same area anyway. And uh, basically, yeah, you've got a table service restaurant, which you would uh, need a dining reservation for. You'll obviously have to pay, pay gratuity for that as well. And uh, unless you've got a Landry card, I believe, obviously, you're going to have to be booking um, a spot at that restaurant. However, with the Yak and Yeti local foods cafe, like all of the quick service restaurants, you will not need a reservation. You can just stroll up at any point during the day. Might have to queue for 10 minutes or so, uh, but then you can uh, sit down and uh, enjoy your meal. Um, so we'll start off by looking at the food here. Um, unsurprisingly, being in the Asia section, this is a little bit different. You've got kind of Asian cuisine, but when I say Asian cuisine, it's kind of the American fast food version of Asian cuisine, sort of. Um, I think there's a Panda Express is quite popular in the US. So it's, it's kind of similar to that. I've never actually had a Panda Express, but to my knowledge, it's very similar uh, to that. So in terms of the food that Jenny and I had, we both went for the uh, honey sesame chicken here. And uh, interestingly, I remember Yak and Yeti, the local food cafe from when I went when I was a lot younger. Um, it does have a special place in my heart because it was uh, one of the quick service restaurants I really enjoyed when I was younger and I enjoyed the honey sesame chicken. It's certainly a good break from if you're getting a bit fed up with having just chicken strips, burgers, that kind of thing all of the time. Um, so we had that with rice. They also do things like um, egg rolls there, otherwise known as, as spring rolls. Um, but then you can also get your, uh, I think it's like an American Kobe cheeseburger um, if, if you do have fussy eaters who don't really like that kind of thing, but you want to try something different. So I think that's really good. Um, so in terms of the food score, we actually gave uh, Yak and Yeti a four out of five for its food. The, qual the quality of the food for a quick service is pretty good, above average, I'd say. Um, but like I say, obviously, for those fussy eaters, you know, you've really just got the burger and otherwise you've kind of just got your like, you know, like your rice and your sesame chicken and a few other options on there as well. But typically that kind of fast food Asian uh, cuisine. Then looking at the location, this is slightly lower. We've given it a 3.5 out of five. Now, the main reason for this is because we actually went to Yak and Yeti local food cafe on what was an incredibly hot day in Animal Kingdom. Um, and we actually left the park shortly after eating here because of how hot it was. And we were actually due to be going to Animal Kingdom Lodge that evening. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of seating in terms of shade. If you go at the, the wrong sort of time of the day, and by wrong sort of time of day, I mean any time between like 11 a.m. and like half two, it is very crowded there. It's popular, which is a good sign for the food. But the, the the spaces underneath fans, for example, or underneath shade are very few and far between. So there's a good chance that if you go here, you are going to be eating in direct sunlight, which 
I mean, Animal Kingdom for me is the is the hottest park. I don't know why, but it just feels hotter there than any of the other three parks. So if you do go here, just be prepared for that. We luckily had one of those mini handheld fans. We got it off Amazon, um, and that was really handy, uh, which we kind of carried around the park, and we just had that on the table blowing into it. So I think we definitely had to dock it a little, um, a couple of, you know, 1.5 points for that because of um, the, the comfort aspect of it. In terms of location, it's pretty central in the park. It's handy, for example, if you have just done, you know, Carly River Rapids or you've just done Expedition Everest. It's quite near where they, um, where the lake is, where they typically do shows. When we were there, it was Kite Tail. So you can kind of watch that as you're passing by or beforehand. Um, and there, there is a fair amount of seating. You should pretty much find a table there. It's just, you're probably going to be hard pushed to find a table under a fan or under, uh, under shade. So just be, uh, be prepared for that. So overall, that gives Yakineti a score of 7.5 out of 10, putting it in fifth place. Next up, we're going to head over to Magic Kingdom for our fourth place restaurant, and this is Columbia Harbour House. Now, this can be found kind of in that area of Magic Kingdom um, when you're kind of moving through from uh, Fantasyland or like kind of the central hub into uh, Frontierland. So it's kind of near, it's quite near Haunted Mansion, I believe. Um, but yeah, it's, it's reasonably, we'll come, we'll come onto the location, but it's reasonably centrally, uh, located. Now this is kind of like a, I've got the menu up, so if I'm glancing to the side, that's why. This is like a, a New England inspired, um, quick service restaurant. And I, I'd say, you know, in terms of what we had food wise, we kept it quite simple. We were a bit boring actually, but this was our first lunch, uh, in a Disney park. So we had to go for chicken strips because we both love the chicken tenders that they do in the Disney park. So we got the chicken strips, uh, four pieces with fries that came to $10.29, I believe, per person. Uh, that's not including a drink. However, they do have a lot of different entrees available here. Uh, you can get a lobster roll, you can get grilled salmon with rice and green beans, you can get a New England shrimp boil, you can get a trio platter of shrimp, um, chicken strips and battered fish with hush puppies. Uh, you can get a grilled shrimp skewer. Uh, I've not got really good memory. I'm reading these off a menu here. Um, but yeah, really good uh, range. I think I've actually even got a, a New England clam chowder here as well. Um, so definitely a little bit more variety than your average quick service restaurant in one of these parks. And that's why uh, we've got Columbia Harbour House in fourth spot. And it also scores a four out of five for the food. Now, like I say, what we had, chicken strips and chips, you could pretty much the same anywhere in Walt Disney World. So the quality was, was good, but pretty standard. But I've, I've given it a four out of five. Um, we've given it a four out of five, as I say, because of that extra element of variety. If you are a fish fan, it's a great place to go, uh, most definitely. Um, also, uh, moving over to then the uh, location and atmosphere aspect, we've also given Columbia Harbour House a score of four out of five for that. It's a very cosy feeling there. Um, I think what I like about it is if you're going to go and have lunch in Magic Kingdom, say you're eating, I don't know, around 11, 12-ish, you want to eat a bit earlier in the day, the good thing about Columbia Harbour House is, is I, don't, I don't think it's one of those places that people are going to be rushing to. Somewhere like Cosmic Rays in Tomorrowland is completely different. It's absolutely swamped. They do get through people very quickly, but it is very busy and it's not a particularly calm kind of feel. It's quite difficult to come across that kind of calm uh, atmosphere at a quick service restaurant. But Columbia Harbour House does bring that to the table, especially if you go upstairs. So I definitely recommend heading upstairs once you've got your food. You can mobile order uh, here as well. We'd actually done it after shortly after watching uh, Mickey's Fellow Magic, I believe, over in Fantasyland. Uh, so it's a really good place to kind of just unwind in the middle of the day, get out of the sun, because I uh, don't believe there's any outdoor seating, correct me if I'm wrong there, but I think it's mostly inside. And like I say, if you sit upstairs, you've got um, kind of a cosy New England kind of feeling with the decor. And then uh, you've got some windows that you can kind of sit by and you can gaze out and you can see, you know, you can people watch in the park, which is always good fun. So I definitely recommend Columbia Harbour House. Once again, it satisfies those picky eaters who just want chicken tenders and chips, but also those people who maybe want something a bit different. Like I say, you can tuck into grilled salmon and green beans here, or you can have your chicken tenders. What's not to like? So yeah, in a fourth spot, Columbia Harbour House, we've given it four out of five for its food and a four out of five for its atmosphere slash location. So that gives it an eight out of 10. So once again, we're moving over to another park for number three, and we're going to Hollywood Studios um, with ABC Commissary. I think I've said that right. Um, now, this is a quick service location, again, uh, located kind of centrally in Hollywood Studios. It's not far from Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, one of our favourite rides of the trip, located in the Chinese Theatre, which is like the central hub of the park. Uh, it's kind of towards the, the Galaxy's Edge side of that, if, if you're looking to find it. Um, now, this is, again, quite a fairly basic one. As I say, a lot of these quick service restaurants are fairly basic, but it did the job. And it's, it's high up on this list, I think, because of its 
um, is, is seating and, and its and its location more than anything else, which, like I say, we'll come on to in a minute. But let's start once again with the food. And we've given ABC Commissary a score of four out of five. Now, in terms of what we had at this restaurant, I had the chicken club sandwich with chips and Jenny had the buffalo chicken grilled cheese sandwich. Now, I definitely had a case of food envy at this uh, quick service restaurant. Uh, my club sandwich was all right. It was pretty average, but Jenny's buffalo uh, no, buffalo grilled cheese sandwich really hit the spot. It was really nice, and she I know she enjoyed it. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can find on the menu here. Yeah, we had a strawberry lemonade slushy. it was, um, with Jenny's favourite Minute Maid lemonade. That was $5.99, so not particularly cheap for a drink, but we, uh, we I think we shared one of them, actually, and it was really refreshing on a very hot day once again. The aircon in here seems to be even better than the average quick service restaurant as well, so probably another reason why we've got fond memories of it. But as I say, um, yeah, I had the ch uh, chicken club sandwich. It's got bacon, provolone, avocado, ranch, etc. And then Jenny had the buffalo grilled cheese sandwich. Other things you can get here is a Mediterranean salad with chicken. There's shrimp tacos, pork carnitas tacos and a Mediterranean salad. Um, so yeah, the food options are pretty good, I think. I know um, DFB Food Guide, a really useful uh, YouTube channel, which obviously focus on food within Walt Disney World, have mentioned before, I remember watching them building up to this holiday, and they'd said that this is a quick service which has upped its game in the last year or so, which I think was interesting. I do remember going there when I was younger. Um, if you are a fan of any American sitcoms, you'll typically find posters of these located around the restaurant. It is quite cool in that sense. But yeah, as far as the food goes, it's pretty standard, but but decent as well. So we've given that a four out of five as far as quick service goes. Obviously, these are all relative to quick service restaurants. So if we've given one a, a 4.5 out, out of five for food, but then we've gone and given a table service a 3.5. That's not us saying the food at the quick service is better. It's relative speaking, you know, in terms of it's a four out of five for a quick service, if that makes sense. So we gave the food at ABC Commissary a four out of five and we gave the same score, um, four out of five for its location and atmosphere. Very handy location, pretty centrally located. If you're in Galaxy's Edge, you can pop over there quite quickly. If you're just coming into the park sort of late afternoon, you want to start with lunch, then it's not very far to go. You just walk down that sort of main strip leading to the Chinese theatre and bare left. Um, so it's, it's pretty centrally located. In terms of the like, atmosphere and the restaurant itself, there is so much seating in there. I'd be very surprised if you couldn't find a seat in ABC Commissary. Um, like a lot of restaurants, it, it's got this rule, I believe, where you kind of... I, 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 I might be wrong, actually. I think you have an issue with whether or not you can sit down with the mobile order, you might have to show to proof that you've got a mobile order first. Again, these rules change all the time in Disney World, so don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of seating there, air conditioned. Um, you've got some posters and maybe even clips of sitcoms playing around the restaurant. Um, and just, yeah, it's, it's a very chilled chilled atmosphere for a nice little break in the middle of the day. We liked it so much, we actually did go back a second time on another Hollywood Studios day. We just went back for a drink. We may have got the lemonade slushy again. Sorry, my memory's a bit hazy on some of these things. It was a, it was a long holiday. Uh, but I think we, yeah, we, we went back in there at least for a drink on another day because we just liked it so much as just a, a break. And I think we sat in there for like an hour which some people might think, you know, you're wasting time, you're in Disney World, but you do need to give yourself that rest sometimes when you're uh, hiking around Walt Disney World, and this was a great place to do exactly that. So four out of five for food, four out of five for location and atmosphere, which gives it an eight out of ten, exactly the same score as Columbia Harbour House. But as I said in my last video, some of these restaurants have the same score, and then we kind of just pick. And again, if we went back, when we go back, hopefully, um, we would we would probably go back to ABC Commissary again. Uh, I think we would do Columbia Harbour House again too, but ABC Commissary just pips it for us in third place. Probably the fact we went back there a second time as well played a part in that. So in third place is ABC Commissary in Hollywood Studios. So uh, for number two, we're actually leaving the parks entirely and we're going over to Disney Springs. And this is Chicken Guy, uh, run and owned or owned certainly by Guy Fieri, a famous restaurateur in um, America. Uh, and Chicken Guy, it does what it says on the tin. It is essentially a fried chicken place. Um, it's, I think, attached to or certainly next to uh, Planet Hollywood in Disney Springs. Now, um, in terms of the food here, we actually rated Chicken Guy very highly, hence why a second, and we gave it a five out of five for food. Now, you could argue well, there's not a lot of variety here, but the quality was was high for a quick service restaurant, definitely. So basically, the, the main thing you're going to get here is your chicken tenders. Now, they do a five tenders meal um, with choice of two signature sauces. That's $7.99 or a five tenders combo meal with fries and a fountain beverage for $13.49. Now, I know I said I wouldn't talk about value, 
uh, in this video specifically, but I think that's a pretty good price when you're getting your five tenders, your fries and a fountain beverage. They also do the, the equivalent of three tender combo with fries and a fountain beverage at $11.49. Um, and then you also have some signature sandwiches that they do here as well. So you've got the CG Classic, it's called, which is like chicken tenders in a with lettuce, tomato, onion, pickle, that kind of thing. The Sauce Boss, um, bourbon, brown sugar, barbecue, Southwestern, lots of different sandwiches um, and burgers here as well. But the USP of this restaurant is sauces. Um, I don't actually have to hand the number of sauces that they do here, I'm sorry, but I'm sure one of the videos I have might have that in. Ultimately, though, you have a range of sauces here, loads of signature sauces to choose from. They're about 50 cents each extra on top of your meal. Um, and we got a variety. So the ones we tried, we both got the five chicken strip or five chicken tender uh, combo meals. And the sauces we tried were the avocado crema, the buffalo, the blue cheese, garlic parmesan and curry mayo. I believe they're the ones we remember anyway, but you can also get donkey sauce, which is mayo, garlic, mustard, Worcestershire, and lemon. You've got curry mayo, like I said, we tried that one. Uh, buttermilk ranch, honey mustard, lemon pepper, teriyaki, um, peri peri, spicy mayo, sweet, sweet sriracha barbecue. Lots of different sauce options here, which you can combine with your chicken tenders. And that's really what makes this place what it is, I'd say. You know, the, ch the chicken is really good. Um, I'd rate it above your average kind of, um, you know, fried chicken meal that you would get at a fast food restaurant in the UK. Um, you know, you've got your fountain beverage, which I think was free refills. And then, like I say, you've got these sauces and, and you can, I suppose for locals, it's quite exciting because, you know, you can go back and you can try a different combo each time. You can say, oh, I've, you know, I'm going to try and try every sauce on this list. Obviously for us Brits, that's not so easy. Um, but yeah, we had the five chicken strips with the sauces and, um, and fries and drink. Quite basic food. Like I said, the variety is not great, but we're going to give it a five just because of how good it was. We were both looked at each other after eating this. So like, wow, this is really good. And uh, yeah, so that we really enjoyed that. Unfortunately, Chicken Guy, what's kind of holding it back for us um, is the location slash atmosphere. We gave it a 3.5 out of 5 for this. And that's primarily because of the size of the restaurant. Um, fortunately, Jenny had battled whilst I was queuing to find a table for the two of us. But I don't think it was particularly clean. Uh, I think somebody, the, the person next to her, had actually given us some wipes to wipe down the table. Um, and it just around us, there was kind of things on the floor. And I know these quick service restaurants, you can be really picky and be like, oh, there's stuff on the floor. You know, ultimately, you know, if you go into a McDonald's, you don't expect it to be sparkling. So why should we think any different for here? But I do think the size of the restaurant is is a bit of a, a negative factor about this place because you, you're you're probably quite likely on a busy in a busy time to have to sit outside and again you're having to contend with the sun then when ideally your eating time is when you want to get out of the sun and get into the aircon so it, it's a bit difficult I'd say if you've got a big family um, and maybe kids who are struggling in the sun and want to get out of it it's probably not the best place to go for that reason. But if you can find a good spot, then it's really worth it because the food is good, definitely. So in Disney Springs, Chicken Guy, uh, that comes in a second. And I say five for food, 3.5 for its atmosphere slash location, which gives it an overall score of 8.5 out of 10. So drum roll, please. We're into number one and we are going to be going back over to Animal Kingdom and specifically to the world of Pandora for our number one spot, which is Satuli Canteen. This is our number one quick service restaurant to go to in Walt Disney World. I would go back here in a heartbeat. When we plan to go back, I simply have to go to this place. It is so good for a quick service restaurant. Honestly, I'm really, really impressed with it. Um, like I say, it's located in uh, the world of Pandora. It's right by Flight of Passage, which is one of the most popular attractions in Walt Disney World. If you don't know about that attraction, um, look it up. Maybe don't get spoilers, but it is a brilliant a really brilliant ride and the whole world of Pandora is just incredibly immersive theming. If you are a fan of the Avatar films you'll probably want to spend all day there even though there's only two attractions. It is a brilliant land and it's got a brilliant quick service restaurant there as well. So once again we'll start with the food which like Chicken Guy we've given Satuli Canteen a five out of five for food. Now I will premise this by saying Again, it's maybe not the best place for a picky eater. However, there is an option which I'll come on to in a second. Now, the main thing we both had is something called a combination bowl. Um, now, basically, this is like you've got grilled beef marinated in kind of a blend of herbs and spices, um, along with the same like chicken is also uh, chicken thighs marinated in garlic and olive oil. And then they're basically tossed with your choice of either uh, noodles, rice or like a red potato hash, I believe. And then you can also choose your sauce. So the customizable element of this is really cool because 
you could go back multiple times and have something different every time. Like I say, one time you might want to have chicken with noodles. The next time you might want to have beef with the potato hash, for example. Um, so the combination bowl, which is um, kind of their premier dish there, that comes to $17.49. Now that might sound a bit steep for a quick service restaurant, but it is worth it 100%. And it was one of the nicest, probably, well, the nicest quick service meal I had there. Um, you can also get just a beef bowl, so right, it's a slightly cheaper at $14.49, or you can get just the uh, chicken bowl, which is $12.99, so you've just got chicken, and then again, you can have your choice of um, uh, rice or uh, noodles or hash, etc. Um, and then, like I so say, you get your choice of base or sauce, and there are these things called boba balls, which Jenny wasn't too keen on um, before, but didn't mind them in the end. They're, they're like these sweet kind of... Um, I don't even know how to describe them, but you can typically see them on top of drinks and things as well. Um, hopefully, again, some footage will, will shine some light on, on what I'm talking about. So those uh, entrees there, they're really good there. They've also got a chili garlic shrimp bowl as well, uh, looking at the menu currently. Again, this I'm currently talking in the middle of 2022. If you're watching this video in the future, these menus may well have changed, as they often do in Disney World, so bear that in mind. Uh, I'd say if you are a fussy eater, one thing to look at is the cheeseburger steamed pods. Now, these... These are like bao buns, basically, uh, with like a, a burger inside with ketchup and um, I think, uh, well, ketchup, cheese, uh, cheddar cheese, certainly, mustard as well, a pickle. Um, that might sound a bit off-putting even to the, the fussiest of eater, but it basically just tastes like a McDonald's cheeseburger. It is really nice, these cheeseburger steam pods. They're, they're not too doughy, they're, they're tasty. We got, we got some of these as well as our combination bowl because we're greedy, because we'd heard so much about them. We had to try them one way or another and we didn't know if we were going to get a chance to go back there. So we tried them. They come with like vegetable chips, like crisps, basically, um, as opposed to like French fries. So it's a bit different. But I think fussy eaters could be won round by something like the cheeseburger steamed pods. Uh, in terms of other things they do there, um, kids meals, they've got like a, a hot dog there, cheese quesadilla. Again, the cheeseburger steamed pods, but in like a kiddie version. We didn't try this, but I really like the sound of it. And I would like to try it next time. They do a blueberry cream cheese mousse there, which looked really cool. Uh, and then we also got uh, on another visit there, the Pandoran Sunrise drink. We picked up the Night Blossom drink, which is at like a little stall outside of the restaurant. But inside we picked up the Pandoran Sunrise, which is a blend of tropical juices and Powerade melon. That was really refreshing as well. That's, that's $4.99 um, as it stands. You can also get your standard fountain beverages there, your Joffrey's iced coffee, etc. as well. So food wise, I think this is a really, really good quick service restaurant. Like I said at the start of the video, if you are fed up, of eating chicken tenders and cheeseburgers over and over again for you know one to two weeks and you want something different you must visit Satuli Canteen it's a tiny bit more expensive but not a lot really and it's well worth that extra few pennies uh, if you would like so Satuli Canteen five out of five of food uh, in terms of its location and atmosphere we've gone for 4.5 out of five um, I think the 0.5 the, the fact we docked it 0.5 is just because of that that rule at Disney at the moment where we had a mobile order, but we weren't allowed in um, until it had flashed up on my phone. So when you're melting in the heat and you just want a bit of air con, you get what the cast members are just doing their job, of course. But it can be a bit frustrating when you've just got to stand in the sun waiting for a number to flash up when you've got every intention to go and eat in there. I would personally prefer it if you're able to go and grab a table and then queue up. But I know that could maybe lead to carnage and then people come back for, with food and they can't find a table. So I, I, I get it. But obviously that, that was a little bit annoying. Um, but other than that, the, the theming in there is brilliant. It, it feels a bit like you are eating on Pandora, I have to say. There's, um, you know, really cool surroundings. It's very spacious, plenty of seating once again, good air con, a good area of Animal Kingdom as well, um, I, I'd, I'd say. So definitely well worth um, a visit to Tuli Canteen. That takes our number one spot in our list of uh, best quick service restaurants in Walt Disney World. So there you have it. They are our top five quick service restaurants in Walt Disney World. Once again, I've just got a few honourable mentions this time. Uh, firstly, Connections Eatery, I believe that's right. You've got the Creations Shop, but then you've got Connections Eatery. That's located in Epcot. I don't know what it's called anymore, but that Future World front section, basically. Um, when we went there, it actually only been open about a week, I think. That was a really cool restaurant. We did really like it. You get like proper plates and everything. Um, you know, you've got your food on. There's plenty of seating there as well. They've got kind of like worldly cuisine style quick service. So I think Jenny had like a French bistro burger with brie and I had just a standard like chicken sandwich. Again, good. Um, I, I think it was just again that, that, um, you know, it, there's not, and there's not a lot in it really between that and say Yak and Yeti, but 
I think Yakinetti was just had that little bit more going for it with a variety of food. So connections, eatery certainly one to check out in Epcot. Uh, one place we went to on our final morning before we flew back uh, was Woody's Lunchbox in Toy Story Land. I'm mentioning this solely for one reason. It's because of the top shows they do there. Now, this is basically like kind of hash brown style thing, potato barrels with like tortilla chips, salsa, chili, that kind of thing. If you like that kind of thing, they are a must get snack. They're really good. We actually shared it as kind of like a breakfasty lunch thing. And it, and it was enough for the two of us. Big drawback of Woody's Lunchbox is, is, is it's just outdoor seating, essentially. So again, if you're trying to get yourself or your kids, whatever, whoever you're with into the, the cool air conditioning, this isn't the place to go. Uh, Woody's, I, it's my only criticism of Toy Story Land. I'm sorry. It's, I know they've got a new restaurant opening there later this year, I believe. But as it stands, there's not really anywhere indoors apart from the toilets. So it is a bit of a nightmare in that sense. And then also in Hollywood Studios, Ronto Roasters, I believe it's called, which is in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. The Ronto Wraps is another must-get snack. Really cool. Uh, I might even do a video on maybe top five snacks. Uh, who knows? If you if you like the idea of that, then you know, let me know in the comments below. We always like to see what everyone thinks. Like I say, we are a new channel. We're just starting out. Um, so anything that you would like to see, please let me know. Um, there's kind of a, a genre of restaurant which doesn't really fit into the table service or the quick service, and that is the lounges. Now, there's only one in particular I'm taught, I wanted to mention, and that is Nomad Lounge, which is in Animal Kingdom. This is the most chilled place you can go for a bite to eat or a drink in any of the parks for me anyway in terms of the places we went to um we had i had some ribs there they did a bread service they do cocktails both alcoholic and non-alcoholic you're sat by the water really chilled um it's attached to tiffin's which is like the signature table service restaurant so you get a lot of the same kind of foods like there but for cheaper because it's a lounge uh, and the lounges if you ever see any place called lounge in walt disney world basically just think relaxation because it, it typically is it's a really nice place to put your feet up and chill in the middle of a park day um, like I said, I can't think of loads off the top of my head, but Nomad Lounge in Animal Kingdom is one to think about. Animal Kingdom is actually probably my favourite park for quick services. As you can see, we've got Yak and Yeti and Satula Canteen in that top five. And Nomad Lounge is also kind of in that um, same discussion. So, yeah, just a few honourable mentions there. Like I say, we, you know, Disney World is massive and we've only just come back from one trip you, we have not done it or we've not sampled it all. I'm sure there are loads of quick service restaurants in Disney World which could knock some of these out in the top five. This is just our top five based on our, our recent trip. Um, I know Flame Tree Barbecue, again, in Animal Kingdom, it really is a, a great part for quick service places. That gets really good reviews. Um, we liked Cosmic Rays in Magic Kingdom too, but we just went there for, for a drink and uh, saw Sunny Eclipse, the little kind of... Um, I don't even know what he is, but the little alien kind of guy singing along. So, um, yeah, Cosmic Rays is another one to stop by. Uh, like I say, we haven't been to every quick service restaurant. So, you know, take, take this with a pinch of salt. These are our top five. Anyway, I'm rambling. So that's the end of the video. They're my top five or our top five quick service restaurants within Walt Disney World. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Hopefully I have more uh, tips videos for you to come over the next several months for Florida. Um, we've got um, vlogs on the way as well over the next year or so. We're, we're trying our best to kind of put some trips together to put on our channel, give our best advice for how to make the most of, uh, of your upcoming holidays, especially your Disney World holidays. So once again, if you liked what you see, please like and subscribe and uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye.